This is your trigger warning. If you suffer from vertigo, don't watch this video, simply. I'm gonna be discussing a mountain that's 2,000 meters high. So, please don't watch this. I do not want you vomiting on my channel. Thank you. I am not Caleb Buren, and today we are talking about the climb that will be defining the 2020 Tour de France. And for this, I think we have to look no further than stage 17, a stage that I am really, really looking forward to for a plethora of reasons. First of all, it's going through one of the most beautiful regions of France, the Tarentaise. It's a beautiful corner of the Alps. But most of all, it's because we have this race-defining climb, the Col de la Loz. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the Col de la Loz at the Tour de France. And to be honest, I think it's going to be here to stay. So let's talk about the stage as a whole. Stage 17 from Grenoble to the summit at the Col de la Loz. We go over the Col de la Madeleine, a really tough climb, an all category climb that hits 2000 meters in altitude, 20 kilometers at 8%. We hit the descent, we turn round, and then we climb from the bottom of the Col de la Loz at Bride les Bains, heading towards the ski resort of Meribel, and then heading up the very, very difficult climb. It is 20 one and a half kilometers at eight percent it's a really really tough climb that reaches the highest point in this year's Tour de France the Henri de Grange prize at 2300 meters above sea level the Col de la Loz has never been used in the Tour de France it's been used at the Tour de l'Avenir we haven't seen it at the Dauphiné we haven't seen it at the Rue de Savoie or whatever it's called it's new it's completely unfamiliar to these riders yes they've reconned it but they have all said that this is going to be a painful climb and that is for one reason the steepness the difficulty of this climb is unrivaled in this year's Tour de France. At certain points in the climb we are going to be hitting 20%. Just before the finish line under the Flamme Rouge we'll be on an 18% gradient before the line. That is going to really test these riders and really grind them down. And if we do not see some of the best climbers in this race, I'm talking about Tadej Pogacar, Guillaume Martin, Primoz Roglic, Nairo Quintana. To add to this, the final is on a cycling specific pathway. It's a big long straight line for the last three kilometers, but the last six kilometers is on a narrow, freshly paved piece of road, which makes for a smooth ride, if you will, um, for, for the riders in terms of their wheels, but in terms of the difficulty, nah, nah, nah. But if it also rains, the difficulty will then get harder because it'll be so much easier to slip, especially when, when they are throwing their bikes around on the 20% gradients, trying to get every ounce of energy out of their legs. Boy, oh boy, is this climb gonna weed out the men from the boys. Where this stage comes in the race also plays a really important role. We are into the last week of racing. It is our first day properly in the Alps. They will be going ham to try to make any gap that they can ahead of the final couple days, especially those a little bit further back in GC, ahead of the final time trial at La Planche des Belles Filles. And I would not be surprised if the yellow jersey wearer on the evening of the Côte de la Loire stage wins this year's Tour de France. But I am sure that this is going to be the theatre of broken dreams. We've already seen Pino's heart being broken. We've already seen Sivakov's heart being broken. The Col de la Loz is only going to add to this list, add to the drama that we all love about, about the Tour de France. Anyway, that's everything I wanted to talk about. I'm still not Caleb Ewan, despite how many times he gets caught up by crosswinds. I'm sure he has the time to make said YouTube videos. But I'm still not Caleb Ewan, and I will see you around.